Hello, this is Jay speaking. Hey, Jay, this is Barb Wood calling. I'm so sorry I'm late. That's okay, no worries. How you doing? Uh, I was in one of those hells where it's not my department. Let me transfer you to that department, and then you're on hold for another, you know, 10 minutes. <laughs> Classic. We've all been there. That's okay. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm done with them now. Okay, cool. Well, I won't keep you long. I'll just ask you a few questions if you have sure. the time. Well, could we just start, I, I want you to give your opinion. What do you think about, you know, COVID-19 and the executive orders and I guess the state of Maine as it stands today? What are your feelings on that? Um, the, my feelings on that is that I, I think that um, COVID-19 is a serious health problem and it continues to get worse. And... Um, I think that we have to take some extreme measures that we have been taking to try to get this thing under control. Cool. And would those extreme measures be stuff like Janet Mills orders, the the face masking, the $10,000 fines for businesses that don't comply, that sort of stuff? Well, I actually I didn't know it was a $10,000 fine. I knew there was a fine for not complying. Well, the business owner uh, receives a $10,000 fine. Okay. The okay. perpetrator receives a criminal trespass and a $1,000 fine. Okay. Um, yeah, I support um, requiring that people wear masks. Um, cool. Like I said, I'm not, uh, I'm not at this point into all the details because I've just gotten going on this job. Yes, um, and congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. And you know, I think, and I'll just say this, and I'm new. Um, I think that we've got to get to a point where the legislature is being included a little bit more. And I agree. I'm not sure what you know what the right path is on that. But I have to say that I haven't really disagreed with anything that she's done, but it does make me a little, um, makes me think twice about one person having, you know, I happen to agree with her, but what if we had a governor that I didn't agree with? Right. And that's something uh, you and I actually agree on. I'm an independent, but... Uh, okay. According to my understanding, yeah, it seems like at the beginning of all of this, the legislature handed it over to Janet Mills. At least I've been told that by a few people. Eric Brakey's told me that and a couple other representatives basically said the legislature, because of the emergency, gave a lot of powers to Janet Mills. And that's, right. yeah, so I understand. We, we definitely agree on that. I think the power should lie with the legislature at all times. So hopefully we can get that reversed at some point. Yeah, I mean, we're just, we don't start the session until actually the beginning of January. Yeah. Um, we have been meeting for, off and on for the past month, from what I can tell, more on administrative kind of stuff to set ourselves up to actually start the business of the legislature at the beginning of the year. Right. And at that point in time, I think there will be a lot of discussion and debate about sort of who's in charge yeah good and uh another point have you ever done any sort of like independent research or alternative research into some of this stuff some of what stuff oh just some of the COVID 19 you know basically do you just follow like the portland press herald or do you spend time at the end of your day researching white papers <laughs> and journals it's not funny it's important i'm being yeah, serious I'm sorry. I have so I am inundated with so much stuff to read now that I've started this role. Oh, of course, and, of course. And part of the thing that they've told all of us who are new is that you will eventually sort of figure out a rhythm on what to um, pay closer attention to and what things that you just can't do at all. I will tell you. I mean, I read various uh, news. I don't read just the Portland Press Herald. Good. Um, but I, I will tell you personally, uh, two of my best friends are uh, PhD biologists who pay attention to all that kind of scientific stuff. 
and I actually rely on the two of them for a lot of information or for them to explain to me in a way that I can understand um, on various biological kinds of things. So I've had many conversations with them about COVID. Okay. Um, so it, it's so I just use that as an example of I'm not somebody who is just attached to you know one stream of information. I good, try to good. seek out other things. Well, okay, you mentioned uh, two biologists you refer to, and I'm sure you know this, but you never want to uh, rely on an appeal to authority. If I could read you a quick quote from the CDC. This is actually coming from a document titled Novel Coronavirus Real-Time PCR Diagnostic Panel. And this is a quote. So, quote, no, ice, no virus isolates of COVID-19 exist. So, what that means is they've never isolated COVID-19. It's never been in a Petri dish. It's never been isolated. It's never been located. And I know that sounds really weird, but I'm reading this right out of the CDC's documentation. And to follow that up, there the way that biologists identify diseases is something called COX-4 postulates. And they're very simple. And COVID-19 doesn't match up to any of those four postulates. And I'd be happy to read them. They're very simple if you'd like. But uh, yeah, that's why I bring that up because... If you look at some of these white papers, um, they can't even prove this thing exists. And I know that sounds really crazy, but it's in their own words. So, uh -huh. so, I sorry, you have a phone call coming in. No, that's okay. I just declined. <laughs> so I guess I'll just encourage you to look some of that up. And let me let me finish with this. Um, I've talked to thousands of people, not just in our district, but all throughout the state of Maine and you know I've organized huge followings of people on the internet and a lot of people are concerned about a few things including body autonomy, suicide and drug abuse, infringement of unalienable rights, and violations against their freedom of assembly. These are basics from the Constitution that people feel they are being infringed upon. So I just wanted to voice that opinion and let you know like Suicide, for example, there's been 274 suicides this year, and it's up to 18.9%, the suicide rate. And these things are a direct result of lockdowns and mandates. So do you really think all these mandates and lockdowns are helping? Because I think they're killing more people. Actually, I can prove they're killing more people than C-19. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but we have... 350 people shopping at Whole Foods, but my local restaurants in our neighborhood are going out of business. We have a group called Keep It Maine. They were just allotted a hundred thousand more dollars to put up COVID flags and COVID posters. City Hall has been closed since the beginning of the year. Um, and then the New England Journal of Medicine even says that wearing a mask outside healthcare facilities offers little, if any, protection from infection. That's a quote. And they said that wearing masks is a widespread reflexive reaction to anxiety. And these are quotes from journals. So is it just that the legislature and the governor are misinformed? Or is there some sort of nefarious agenda at play here, in your opinion? I don't think there's any nefarious uh, goings on. You don't think so? No, I don't. Okay, let me leave you. I don't want to take up too much of your time, so let me leave you with a quick quote, and I appreciate you answering this call. Section 1 of Article 1 of the Maine State Constitution, Natural Rights, all people are born equally free and independent, and they have certain natural, inherent, unalienable rights, among which are those of enjoying and defending life, liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and of pursuing and obtaining safety and happiness. And that safety and happiness, that clause alone, we have the right to replace our government if we're not happy. And I think you know that. Obviously, you swore on the Constitution, so I'm sure you read it. And um, I encourage you to just do some research because uh, the system's lying, and you're part of the system. So before you really get involved with this, I hope you, you do a gut check and do some homework because 
something's going on and the people are not going to put up with it for much longer. And it's our right and it's our duty to replace all the y'all if you don't come out and tell the truth. Well, uh, I absolutely agree that uh, our whole system is based on if you don't like who's representing you, I mean, that power of the vote is pretty powerful. It's not, though, because our election was just stolen. (laughs) So Uh, voting's out of the question. Oh, no, 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 not even Trump. No, just... What, um, What election was stolen? If you look at Portland, Maine's relation to Dominion... I can't go, it's a lot of details, but our system's compromised. Our voting machines are compromised in Maine. You don't know that? Uh, no, I don't know that. Hmm. Well, you should look into it. Look into Dominion voting and uh, look into some of the associations close to Mark Zuckerberg that paid for our voting systems here in Maine. Oh, yeah. right. I think if you, if you ever want to email me you can email truemediaportland at gmail.com i'm not trying to be partisan i'm trying to be honest and i'm trying to be truthful and i don't want this to escalate to something violent but the state of maine is killing its own citizens killing its own businesses and yeah i just hope you you pick the right side in this i know this is a lot of information i'm throwing at you so you don't have to answer anything but yeah this is bad I, i've stated everything i think i need to state so if you want to make a comment before i let you go you can no, I'm I'm all set. I've heard what you have to say, and I will continue to do as much research as I can. Wonderful. And if you ever want to email me, truemediaportland at gmail.com, I'd love to send you any info you might be looking for. Okay. All right. Alrighty. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. Okay, take See care. Bye-bye. 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 Well... <laughs> I don't even know what to say, you guys. Just as I expected it would go. Um, No disrespect to her. You know, perhaps she just doesn't know what's going on, but look at your screen, you guys. New England Journal of Medicine. Masking is a... Can't even say it. Suicide rates skyrocketing. Um, Here is that document from the CDC. Now, I can't even say this stuff. I've already, You guys watched it. You've seen it. You know exactly what this document says. I can't even say it. I can't even say it because we don't have rights anymore, and my voice will be silenced if I say it. Cox postulates, right? <laughs> of course, the Constitution of Maine. I guess I can leave you guys with that because I'm sure Barbara will watch this, and she might not know what Cox postulates are. But this has been the gold standard for identifying, I don't know, what it would viruses and bacteria, you know. One, the microorganism must be found in abundance in all organisms suffering from the disease, but should not be found in any healthy organisms. So, um, of course, every single healthy person who gets a PCR test will likely have it in their system, according to them, right? So already it breaks the first one. Um, And also it breaks it a second way by saying there should be an abundance of it in all organisms suffering from the disease, but a sick person can take the same PCR test and come up negative. So number two, the microorganism must be isolated from a diseased organism and grown in pure culture. And we just read from that CDC white paper that that has not been done. It has never been isolated. Three, the cultured microorganism should cause disease when introduced into a healthy organism. Well, if they can't isolate it, they sure as hell can't test that. And number four, the microorganism must be re-isolated from the inoculated diseased experimental host and identified as being identical to the original specific causative agent. So if I'm healthy, they should be able to give it to me. They should be able to already isolate it, give it to me, watch me get symptoms, remove it from me, and be able to isolate the exact same thing from the beginning that they put in me. So it doesn't meet any of those four postulates, right? And then, of course, we have the New England Journal of Medicine saying the truth. Then we have City Hall being closed and Whole Food. Guys, this is bad. This is bad. So uh, I think you should call your representative and record it. One down, many more to go. God bless. I'll be back later.